self-soothing mechanisms, right? Those that immediate gratification of, I agree, I disagree, I like, I don't like, it's good, it's bad, it's this, it's that, that immediate, where do I stand on this? And is it a threat to me? Desire is a survival-based conditioning program. We don't move on while those still take hold of us because they're creating on our behalf. Survival is the way to find our oneness with life is the system of life on the planet. That is a larger system that directs our steps. We are either part of it and we strive and we evolve or we ignore it at our, at our risk and we go in other ways that may or may not work out. The chances mm-hmm. are that they don't work out because there's not everything can go. What really goes and strives and flourishes is what that is attuned, aligned with this this universal harm, mm. harmony, which is which is there in the, in the traditional cultures, they recognize it, they knew it. The search for harmony is still there, interestingly enough, in the East. You know, when underneath is all the power uh, grabbing and and and, uh, and search for and competing, there is still the search for ultimately for the harmony with this music of the spheres, with the with the world oneness system, which is also there. So this is the, the never a, a never ending quest. And once we got to the point where we recognize it and we can follow it, then we no longer fall back into this artificial, disguided, misguided ways, which threaten not only our well-being, but threaten our very existence. Mm. Beautiful. I love that you mentioned quests. And we talk about that a lot in the superpower world because it, mm-hmm. we the idea that life is an experience, right? That we actually are in this big quest that we you get to choose your adventure, like you said, which current do you want to ride? Do you want to ride that undercurrent of connectivity and oneness and love and learn the very nature of our existence and creation? Or do you want to play in these other currents? And you can do all of it, but to Irvin's point. It may have results that you don't particularly enjoy, right? This is, and and Irvin, you made a really interesting comment that I think bears repeating, which is you can't just do whatever you want here, right? It's not, it's not a world where you can do anything, right? We're capable of quite a bit, but it's a responsive universe that's responding to all of us, right? We are the, the entirety of the makeup and it's like the biggest computation of algorithms, right? You want to talk about you're a system scientist, right? Like th- this is the most massive, most brilliantly, divinely designed system, you know, creation itself. It's it's perfect. And we can learn a lot about building systems when we understand its very nature. But you made that comment, we can't just do anything. And I think in the new age consciousness movements, it's like, oh, I can just visualize a new car or I can visualize this or I can do this and it's just going to magically appear. What did you mean by we can't just do anything, right? We can't just do whatever we want. How, what did you mean by that? We are a member of a larger whole than we are ourselves, by ourselves. We are part of something larger than ourselves. And that means that we are dancing with the rest of the membership of that organization. we are all together. You can't try, uh, dance by stepping on the toes of your partner all the time. Mm-hmm. It won't lead anywhere. You have to be aligned. You have to be part of, you have to cohere with the others. You have to have a mutual understanding that we move to forward together. If you, This is natural. This is instinctive on the level of non-conscious or pre-conscious living beings, plants, animals, most our living systems. When you have this level of consciousness that we have, then we are also capable of making a mistake of ignoring our natural oneness, our natural belongingness to others, and setting out on paths that seem to serve our ends, serve our immediate ends, our, our short-term satisfactions, making getting us more power, more money, and more influence around us, perhaps more partners, whatever. All of this can be served, can be a wonderful part of an evolutionary trip, but it can also mislead us into artificial ways. Think of how we live today. We live largely in an entirely synthetic environment. More and more, what we eat, how we dress, how we communicate, it's removed all into the artificial synthetic ways. 
-hmm. Some of them are very good and, and need to be developed, put place into our service. But many of them are just leading onto, onto short-term satisfaction, but long-term this, this, this equilibria. You can't yeah. continue to favor a small bit in a, in a large system without mm -hmm. destroying the coherence, the balance of the system. Interesting enough, you know, I'm reading up off and on from the ancient, uh, ancient sages, like the yellow emperor of China 5,000 years ago. He was saying all these things, you know, how <laughs> the balance is, 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 been, is there in nature and it has to join it, you know. It's in us. We That's have right. forgotten it. It's time to recover it. This time, if we recover it and become conscious, become conscious of who we are, how we evolve, then we can guide our evolution. Yeah. Then we are over this non-linearity, this hiccup mm -hmm. in our evolutionary past, which is, was, I think, I'm getting over it now, but it's a very dangerous one, because That's if right. we get totally out of hand, we can destroy the highest levels of, of living systems on the planet. Well, I tell you what, Irvin, that's not happening on our watch, right? It's not happening. So this isn't going back in the bag. We all know that this feels true. It feels good, right? We know when things feel whole and true and real, and we will pursue that to the ends of the earth when we remember what it feels like. And so tap into that, folks. Think about what Irvin's talking about. If you want to know how to turn your life into a series of quests, Start asking questions, like real questions, not like, hey, Siri, how do I do this, right? Like immediate information isn't necessarily the same thing as understanding, right? It just because you have an answer doesn't mean you understand something. I remember in my graduate program, I was in a master's level program with a bunch of doctoral candidates and we were reading this really dense philosophy material. And, and I was asking all kinds of questions and one of the philosophies or the doctoral students was regurgitating the information. And I'm like, dude, that is not helpful. I can read the book, but I still don't understand it. Pretend I'm three years old and explain it to me, right? And distilling these concepts down within yourself to a, an understandable level at a micro scale, every cell of your being gets that new program is essential and it takes a moment. <laughs> it takes time, right? So ask the question and leave your mind open. Leave your mind open and the magic happens, right? One of